staying healthy, staying sexy, staying young is what living life is all about. And if you have doctors that have proven treatments that keep people young and healthy so they don't get sick, um, you want people to know about these treatments and that they exist. This episode is brought to you by Gainswave. Gainswave is a treatment done at your doctor's office to optimize erection quality without the need of Viagra, Cialis. It's non-surgical, there's no needles, and it has an amazing success rate. To find a Gainswave provider, go to gainswave.com. That's G-A-I-N-S-W-A-V-E.com. So this is Mark L. White with Health Hacks. And today I'm so happy to have as my guest, Dr. Larry Goodman. Dr. Goodman's an expert in mindset. And in these times in this post COVID era, I think we all have to uh, reflect on our mindset because that's what keeps us sane. Um, well, welcome to the show, doctor. It's an honor and a privilege. Thank you. So first of all, like mindset, like, let's talk a little bit about mindset. Cause I know that for me personally, um, having the right mindset is the difference in not only how I look at things, but I notice when I have the right mindset, I'm happier. And, um, you know, I look at things with a different set of glasses, but uh, how, how are you coaching your people? First of all, tell me a little bit about yourself. So, um, let's see. I have a degree in psychology, a degree in nutrition, a degree in chiropractic and a degree in acupuncture. I ran a very, uh, successful, multi-doctor holistic chiropractic practice until the uh, early 90s. And at that time, I decided to dive deeply into the stuff that uh, either makes people successful or keeps people stuck. I, I had my own series of challenges at that time that, that centered around um, a, a weather event that we had here in South Florida called Hurricane Andrew. And then there were some other challenges that took place that led me to the awareness that while I had learned a whole lot about what it was to be successful in business, that I hadn't really learned a lot about how to be successful in the business of being me. And that led me down the course of coming to the awareness of that really mindset is everything. And so um, that led me to studying with some of the great masters of mindset and mind-body healing wow. and the, the science of uh, psychoneuroimmunology and somehow that got me here today. Okay, so take me back. It's 1992, Hurricane Andrew wipes you out or wipes well, out. Well, let's, let's say there was Hurricane Andrew, mm -hmm. a wrongful death malpractice suit, and the, uh, the awareness that came to me that the, uh, the mother of my child, who also happened to be my practice uh, manager at the time, and I don't recommend that necessarily, no, but no. Um, the, these three events occurred uh, within a 90-day period. And let's just say that nothing in my life and none of the guidance and advice that anyone had given me about how to live my life prepared me for what to do when all of that uh, came unglued. I bet a lot of people are going through their own personal Hurricane Andrews right now, financially and, and health-wise. Um, did you know any of this stuff or did you have to, you, you mentioned some masters, but did you like just wake well, up no, one morning and so, say, I'm gonna change my mindset? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so um, I don't often share this and um, I do only when it, 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 it is purposeful, but I will tell you that um, before I got to study with all these masters, I first attempted to become a charter member of the Amateur Chemistry Society, which means that I consumed massive amounts of alcohol with, with uh, various pharmaceuticals that had been prescribed by well-intentioned psychiatrists who never intended for me to do them together with alcohol. And um, long story short, there were um, a series of suicide attempts. And um, let, let's just say that when I came to the last time, it became crystal clear to me that the only way to get out of the situation that I was in was to go through it. And that 
um, my mess really became my message. And so in the process of finding out how it is I got there, I got to learn so much about what mindset is, how to become a master of mindset and have come to make that the, the stuff that I spend my life doing with and for other people. I guess you probably don't recommend that people should hit rock bottom before. <laughs> it's, it's, it's certain. Well, what I'm going to say to you is it's not required and how low your bottom gets to be is really something that you have much more control over than you think you do. And in fact, what I was going to say before we get too deep into this is that the affirmation that you made at the start of this segment, I really want to acknowledge you for, and that was the declaration that we've entered the post-COVID period. Because if you pay too much attention to what's going on in the world out there, they're not only not in post-COVID yet, they're doing everything they can do to keep COVID alive. And there's no percentage in that. So, well, first of all, like, okay, let's talk about what is mindset anyway? Because you said that like a lot of people don't understand mindset or people are hearing that and they have different meanings, but how do you describe So let, let me sum it up this way. <clears throat> your innermost dominant thought becomes your outermost tangible reality. Another way to say that is that what you focus on will grow. So what you think is what your reality is. Yes. Okay, so if I think COVID doesn't exist, it doesn't, it still exists. Yes, but if you think something great is gonna happen to me today, and that is the first thought that you, that enters your mind and that actually comes out of your mouth in the morning, which is my recommendation to everyone at every speaking engagement that I have ever done since I became aware of this gift. If that becomes the first thought in your mind and the first words out of your mouth, and therefore then the first words that you hear you say, you're gonna have a completely different day than you would have any other way. Okay. So focusing on what your innermost thoughts are, but the problem is for most people, including myself sometimes, is we can't control what we think. Or is that, is that there a truth to that? So the truth is you can't control anything, but you can control what you focus on. We're doing that right now. You can't control anything except the things that you can. So you and I had this appointed time to get on this call today and you showed up for it. I showed up for it. The technology showed up for it. And we had contingency plans in place in case things didn't go the way that we hoped that they would go. And for a whole host of reasons, predetermined by more than anything, I believe, intention on both of our parts. The call started at the right time. We both showed up here to do this. The technology appears to be cooperating and we're gonna have a great talk. Yeah, I think that the last thing you said, we're going to have a great talk. If we both intend on it, it'll happen. Yes. But how, okay, so if somebody's in a rut right now um, and somebody is in a bad place, maybe they, I, I have friends who have lost their businesses because of what's going on. Um, when you say lost their businesses, this, this is a point I want to make a distinction sure. about, and that is the power of words and the power of our self-talk. No one ever lost their business. You could lose something because you don't know where you left it, but you don't lose a business. Circumstances can change that can require you to make a, a change in your business plan or way of operations to deal with the new reality that you didn't foresee coming. 
but you cannot lose. I could lose the keys to my car, but I can't lose a business. The circumstances can change. And then with good coaching and with good mastering of your mindset, what you'll be able to do is seize the opportunity that's really there in disguise. So, so a way for like, if I'm going back to the person who lost his business, a better mm -hmm. way for him to say that is, wow, this change has um, given me the opportunity to explore other opportunities. Um, and in three to five years, I'm going to be a better person because of that. I would even say, why wait three to five years? If anybody's been watching any of my postings, you'll see I've been, I've been floating the hashtag, now more than ever, hashtag, we are the solution. Because out of the, what we'll call for one of a better way to put it, out of the challenge of the change in doing business, that is represented by what is taking place right now. I'll just speak for myself and say, this quarter and this last month has been the most prosperous, most thriving month I've had since I started my coaching business. What I'll tell you is that the clients that I work with seem to fall into three general categories based on their mindset. The first category is the ones that are struggling. And they're struggling largely because they haven't seen the opportunity yet. The next category is the ones that are sustaining. They've made some of the changes necessary to deal with the new reality. And so they're treading water. They're not growing, but they haven't I'll use your words, they haven't lost their practice. And the third group are the ones that have done and are doing what we're talking about, which is they recognize the opportunity hidden in the challenge and have made the strategic changes, the tactical changes, the procedural changes necessary so that they too are thriving at this time. And all, all of that is just controlled by the function of the brain. I, one of the books I think that was most meaningful for me is Man's Search for Meaning. Amen. Um, 100%. Victor, Victor Frankel. Yep. Um, and uh, I guess he wrote that. He was also psycho a psychiatrist, I think. And um, He was a psychiatrist and he was a prisoner in the Holocaust. And um, it was what he noticed was that the people that actually survived the Holocaust versus the people who perished, the only difference he could ascertain was mindset. Yep, 100%. But how do you, okay, but if somebody hasn't learned, like is it ever, are you ever too old to change your mindset? How does somebody change their mindset? Over God, I hope not. I'm turning 65 on June 21st. Happy birthday. Thank you. And actually, I'm 65 years young. And, and that is the point that again, I want to focus on and emphasize because I do in my coaching is the power of words and conscious languaging that, you know, the, the scripture says first there was the word and by the choice of the words that you use in both your self-talk and your talk with others becomes how you shape both the in the quantum physics realm, it's how you shape the vibrational frequencies that you resonate. It's how you shape the innermost dominant thoughts that you have. And by repetitively repeating affirmations, the affirmations based on neuroplasticity literally become a part of your brain and of your body. Okay, so does somebody though, like you, you said that you had to sit with masters. Tell, tell me about some of these masters that you've learned from. And, and if somebody's listening to this, how would they go about changing their mindset if they are looking for help? So A, the first thing you do is you decide. 
And the word decide literally comes from the Latin origin, which states and says to eliminate or cut off all other options. So when you decide that um, in network, one of my favorite scenes in the movie is when Howard Beale tells everybody to get up and go to the window and open the window up and, and make this affirmation, I'm mad as hell and I'm not gonna take it anymore. Now, I'm not saying you have to be mad to change your mindset, but you can and do have the capacity to decide when you've had enough. And so when you decide you've had enough, that can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. And how you do that, yes, I mentioned masters. I have had the opportunity to study with um, John D. Martini and um, many others. He's my number one go-to mentor. He's one of the masters of human behavior. I have uh, studied and read, I can't say I've read everything he's written because he keeps writing, but I've, I've read enormous amounts of what he's written. I've studied with him. I've gone to workshops with him. And then there is uh, Dr. Nima Romani and many others and read all kinds of books on the subject. And um, I have to say, I aspire to and have become in my own way a master and a mentor for my clients. I have written a book called Fridays with Goodman and I have a coaching service that is available to people because it's a big deal to change your mindset. It's not for the faint of heart. It's not something that's um, a one shot deal, so to speak, because you can start it, but it requires you to do it every day, every day, every day. So, you know, like Carolyn Dweck said that there's two mindsets. There's the fixed mindset, and then there's the growth mindset. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, are we, so how, how are we determining our mindset? Is it just the experiences we have growing up? Is it something genetic? Like what causes somebody to have this fixed mindset? Like what beliefs are behind that? And how do they become self-aware if they want to change that? <laughs> um, I, I, I know what I'm going to say is going to sound simplistic, but it starts with something as simple as waking up, literally and metaphorically waking up. You can have an unexamined life and live the same day 365 days a year, like that movie Groundhog Day, you know? And many people do that, unfortunately, because they, for whatever the reasons, having to do with belief systems and personal laws, they've come to believe that they are unworthy and more than anything, that they don't deserve or don't possess the traits necessary to be exceptional. And all it takes really is, like I said a few minutes ago, the decision that you're worth it, the decision that you deserve it, the decision to invest your time, energy, and money on it will open the door to anything. So I literally had gone from being that guy in 1993, multiple suicide attempts in a drug and alcohol rehab program. And so if you would have told me then when I hit that rock bottom that I'd be writing books, traveling around the world, doing programs, both live and virtually, empowering other people to transform their lives. If you would have told me then that that would be what I'd be spending my life doing, the truth is I'd have said, you're out of your mind. And what it really required was for me to get out of my mind. I had to get out of the old mind and 
brick by brick, disassemble it, see where the parts came from that didn't serve me, and be willing to reassemble me into what I call you 2.0. And that really is the cornerstone of the work that I do with people is the ability to rebuild, remodel, if necessary, repair, so that the whole comes to be greater than the sum of the parts and that the parts you put in now will determine what your future is going to be like. Does that require also mindfulness, which is different than mindset? Because sometimes I think, like I find myself not realizing that I'm lost in my thoughts. And I think one of the things that's very difficult is how are we mindful that we are stuck in a bad mindset. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. And what I'll say to you about that is I have found it to be essential to have a coach and even better to have a coach who's got a coach. Because when you're in the box, you can't tell you're in the box. It takes someone who has come to know you, who gets to know your process, who gets to know your, um, your story, who gets to know the way that you look at things and can help you, uh, I'll say lovingly, with a whack upside the head when you need it, to get out of your own way so that you can have your goodest life. So I assume you also have a coach. I do. Um, and then you coach others. How many people are you coaching um, currently? And how, how long does it take? If somebody says, I want you to coach me, doctor, how long does it take before they see changes? You will see changes as the result of being on this call today. If you do something as simple and profound as beginning today, make the statement every day, the affirmation, something great is going to happen to me today. I can promise you, A, that something great will happen to you today, and B, if you notice it and you reach out and let either you know or they can reach out to me at goodmanfactor.com, you can let me know what great thing that happened to you today as the result of making the decision that something great was going to happen to you today. But I think the question you're really asking is, what does it look like to be coached by me? And the answer is there are many ways to go about it. <clears throat> and in the interest of time, what I'm going to say is you can check out my website, goodmanfactor.com. You can reach out to me through you. And I'd be glad to explain the multiple ways that we have to tailor make a coaching experience so that people can be and do and have what they would love to be and do and have. And that's the best way I can put it. So really anybody can do whatever they want as long as they set their mind to it. It's like the law of attraction. What, what it is, it is absolutely is what the law of attraction is an integral part of what it is I recognize and teach because it's been my experience that that's what runs the whole show. Well, and you've been doing this now for 27 years, 26 years? I'm afraid so. <laughs> the beautiful thing about it is, A, every day is a new day full of new opportunities, and B, I keep learning new stuff. I keep learning both from my own life and the opportunities to work with other people the, the science keeps evolving. The ability to hack the mind keeps evolving. The ability to work with everybody's story, because even though we're all different, we really are underneath it all, kind of sort of the same. Mm -hmm. And by, <clears throat> by being able to find the right language, to find the right process, to help people get unstuck, you can literally go from 
stuck to unstoppable. You can. I guess, well, you know, I, I know we have just a couple more minutes left, but like when you think about society as a whole and what's going on with politics, civil unrest, um, you know, police brutality, as this is like, is there such thing as a humanity mindset or, or because? Let me answer you this way. In many ways at this moment, humanity is at the same point that I was at in 1993. <laughs> Mass suicide. In a cultural way, yes. And so my first recommendation to that is you only get five minutes a day to focus on that. Because if you spend more time than that, you get it, will lead, it will lead you down a black hole. It will lead you into what are called open loop questions that will not give you practical, usable answers that'll make a difference in you and in your life right now. So it's just focusing on what you can control. You can't control what's, what diseases are out there. You can't control. God what... grant me the serenity That's to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. 2,000 years of um, wisdom and it's still all good sometimes we just need a good coach to keep us on track always always dr larry goodman you're a good man i, I really Thanks. appreciate the time i appreciate you taking time out of your schedule and if you want more if you want to be a part of dr goodman's coaching program go to goodmanfactor.com the, the links will be in the show notes and you can always check out his book, Fridays at Good Fridays, Fridays with Goodman. With Goodman. Fridays with Goodman. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It was an honor and a privilege. Have All a right. blessed day. You too.